What's up, Sunshine? I'm Koi. This is CNN 10. We're just halfway through the week, but we're going to keep on grinding and shining because that's what we do. Today is hashtag Your Word Wednesday. So listen up to see if the vocab word you submitted helped us write today's show. First, we head to Washington, D.C., where the Senate is on track to pass a $95 billion foreign aid package this week. That's after the House passed it over the weekend. The bill contains nearly $61 billion in aid for Ukraine, which is defending itself against a Russian invasion. It also provides billions of dollars for Israel and Taiwan. Democrats and moderate Republicans have been unable to pass an aid package for Ukraine for months because of objections from some conservative Republicans who say they want that money to be spent here in the United States. But now, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says Congress is ready to take the next step and get America's European ally the support he says it desperately needs. CNN's Fred Plaikin breaks down how the U.S. money will be spent in Ukraine. Russian troops advancing in a heavy firefight in eastern Ukraine. This video from Russian military TV claiming to show Ukrainian soldiers having to surrender. Ukraine's howitzers often unable to support their frontline units, severely lacking 155 millimeter artillery shells. But now they hope that will change. We'll defend ourselves and counterattack. Kremlin-controlled media seething after the House passed the Ukraine aid bill while praising Republican Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene for trying to derail it. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who New York Post already dressed in a Yushanka hat with a star, officially putting her in the ranks of Kremlin agents, called Speaker Johnson a Democrat elected by Ukraine. Johnson. Green also said that Johnson betrayed not only Republicans, but the whole of the USA. Nonetheless, the U.S. military aid will be bigger this year compared to the past years. And of course, there is nothing good in that. Russia's foreign minister going even further, threatening nuclear confrontation. Westerners are teetering dangerously on the brink of a direct military clash between nuclear powers, fraught with catastrophic consequences. Particularly that it's the troika of Western nuclear states that are among key sponsors of the criminal Kyiv regime. Ukraine is in desperate need of lots of artillery ammo, Kyiv says, badly outgunned by Vladimir Putin's forces. But also air defense missiles, with Russia drastically escalating its missile and drone campaign against Ukraine's cities and power plants. Ukraine's president saying he's grateful for the aid, but the weapons need to come fast. The time between political decisions and inflicting real defeats on the enemy at the front, between the approval of the aid package and providing the strength to our guys, this should be reduced to a minimum. And the Ukrainians hope U.S. aid will arrive quickly and change the tune on the battlefield, allowing Kiev's forces to stop further Russian advances. Fred Plaikin, CNN, Kiev. All right, you ever get that spinning wheel of death on your phone, so you try restarting it, hoping it will reboot? Well, imagine doing that to a computer from the 1970s located 15 billion miles from Earth. That's what a team of NASA scientists did to Voyager 1, a spacecraft launched in 1977 to gather data from the deepest recesses of our universe. Voyager 1 and its twin, Voyager 2, were only meant to last five years, but they've been sending back data from outer space for 46 years now. Or at least Voyager 1 had been sending back information until the end of 2023, when the space probe began experiencing some issues and sent a bunch of code that scientists just couldn't figure out. Now, after some long distance troubleshooting, NASA says Voyager 1 is operational again and sending usable information again for the first time in five months. Next, we head to Minnesota, where a driver is thanking a group of good Samaritans for saving his life. He survived with only superficial injuries after fellow motorists saw an accident on the highway and jumped into action. Check it out. This is the moment a driver was saved from a burning car on the highway in Minnesota. After veering off the road, the car hit a light pole and caught fire, State Patrol said. 
Drivers and passing vehicles rallied together to save him as the flames grew. After breaking the driver's side window, they pulled him to safety. The driver was taken to the hospital, but reported no serious injuries, authorities say. Pop quiz, hot shot. Which one of these is the longest river in China? Mekong, Yellow, Yangtze, Taling. If you said Yangtze, yeah, right. It's the longest river in both China and all of Asia with a length of 3,915 miles. It's also the third longest river in the world, right after the Nile and the Amazon. What would you do if someone called your outfit gross? Well, in China, some young people would be thrilled, all because of a new trend on social media where young people are competing to see who has the dorkiest drip. It's happening on Douyin, the Chinese version of TikTok. Our Mark Stewart explains how this became a thing and why the hashtag gross outfit for work garnered more than 140 million views. For some young people here in China, what I'm wearing right now may be considered too dressed up, too formal for the workplace. Part of a bigger online movement reflecting concerns of this current generation. We've been scouring social media and essentially young people are wearing what's being called gross work outfits. We saw a young man wearing a flannel shirt and sweatpants, a young woman in pajamas and a bulky sweater. Business suits and high heels are out, puffy jackets and slippers are in. These videos that are circulating are going viral. It's a reflection of protest of bad bosses, low pay and long hours in the workplace. An extension of sorts of the live flat movement rejecting consumerism and the office rat race. It's a statement about the rough economy here in China. In fact, if you look at government data, the jobless rate for young people was nearly 15 percent in December 2023. Many young people don't feel optimistic. Some of the postings online have messages such as my ugly outfit matches my salary and how gross my work is. How gross will my outfit be? We've seen generations express themselves through art, music, and writing, and for the current moment here in China, fashion. Mark Stewart, CNN, Beijing. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10, a youngster with a fastidious approach to his craft. Checkmate. Indian chess prodigy Gukesh Domaraju, better known as Gukesh D, is about to become the youngest player ever to challenge for a world chess title. The 17-year-old grandmaster won the men's candidates tournament in Canada on Sunday. He's the youngest player ever to win that competition. Now he's headed to the World Chess Championship later this year. If he wins, he will break Russian chess legend Garry Kasparov's long-held record of being the youngest world champ. Kasparov was 22 when he achieved the title. All right, congrats to Mr. Dolan and all the fine folks up in Archbald, Pennsylvania at Valley View for submitting fastidious, an adjective meaning extremely or excessively careful or detailed. Well done, Cougars, and thanks for making us smarter today. Today's shout out is going to Mrs. Connor's class at Northwest High School in Omaha, Nebraska. How you doing, Huskies? And Miss Dab's class at North Star Elementary in Anchorage, Alaska. Keep shining bright, North Star. Thanks to all of you for submitting your shout out requests on our CNN 10 YouTube page. We appreciate you. We hope you have an awesome day. I'll see you right back here tomorrow on CNN 10.